church. We're kind of like cheers. We have a bar, and everybody knows your name here if you hang out long enough. Will you stand? We're going to start off with our call to worship. Purple is me, green is you. One voice, Jesus is in our midst. Jesus, our healer, deliverer, and friend, is here. Many voices. We have heard so many good things about him, but we long to meet him, to encounter him ourselves. Am I supposed to say the one voice, many voice, Ken? Well, we're going to skip that part. Call out to him and do not be silent. Like Bartimaeus, shout to him and do not allow anyone to silence your voice. Cry out and tell Jesus what you need. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. We need a touch from you. Touch me. Touch us in our need, which we lift right now in our hearts. In this time of worship, celebrate God's goodness. In this time of celebration of worship, know that Jesus touched your place of need. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I guess there's no nothing for you guys on the end. Of, I get the last word. Let's sing together. Ready, go. Praise is right. Find strength to face today. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away. They're washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna. You are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praise. Welcome. 
seated. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Grace. How about now? You can hear it? Okay, well, if you can hear it, the internet can hear it. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're, we're, we're on. We're on live. Okay, today is fourth Sunday. Did you bring your feeding 2000 with you today? All right, I'm going to ask our kiddos up here any other kiddos back there today to pick up yes sir come right on up and, and y'all can take these we're going to bring them up here and then after you, after we've got it and we're going to bless it you need to go pick it up from everyone pour it right in the basket jay you can well, do it one at a time if you want bud <laughs> We had some people that brought theirs early and had left it in the office. That's why they have so many up here at the front already. But anyway, everyone I hope here today knows about feeding the 2000. We actually, this, go, this is in conjunction with the food bank who is moving into our building over here next door. As y'all have noticed, a parking lot that's been out, that's put out there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We, we will be able to use that parking lot for our food truck festival this coming Thursday night. But I also wanted to point out to you, did you notice the new driveway into the church over here? Yes. Okay. If you feel so led to, you may contribute towards that. It costs $6,000, but it's worth it all. So if you want to contribute to it, you can just drop a check in the, in the box. In the, in the bucket today, and it comes around just right on their driveway or asphalt or something like that. <laughs> that would be fine. Jay, Jay, determined to carry as many as he can. Ooh, this is getting heavy. That's good. <laughs> That's pretty good, Jay. I'm impressed. Don't you love the sound of somebody having a meal and getting to have something to eat? Yes. Amen. Praise God. One dollar buys food for three people. Pastor Dewey has one back there. Y'all need to pick up. This money goes a lot further than it would to grocery store because through the East Texas Food Bank, that's where they we buy the, the food for the food bank over here. Well, that's true. Yeah. It's getting heavy. Yeah, yeah. It's getting heavy. I, this might not have been the best thing. Yeah, that's okay. Leave that out. I need to read it. Put it in here. Yes. You want to put the basket here, Dan? Might be a good idea. Put it right on that little stool there. There you go. That's a good problem. You have to put your finger up. Man, you ain't kidding. I'm sure most of you have probably read what is said on the paper, but I'm going to read it to you right quick. Thank you for joining the Feeding the 2000 campaign. You, along with countless others, will help to feed those who are in need of a meal. The campaign is not budgeted out of this church. It is intended to be a thank you or love offering from families in the church. The Feeding the 2000 is a campaign that is completely volunteer, administrative staff of the office, to the packers, pickers, and boxers of the food, to the servers who present each food, each box of food, all are volunteer. Their heart and service for God, for Lord, are undeniable, and their service is done in love, just as our Lord and Savior commands. 
a special thank you to the, uh, Lou Lardy, who may rest in peace, who received this vision and began this campaign in December of 1986. And we just, and this was at a church in Fulton, California. We have just now begun to uh, hear, last month begin here. But Jesus said they need to go away. They need not go away. You give them something to eat, Matthew 14 through 16. So, I am going to finish announcements. I never know which order to go and do this right here. We still need food. Uh, 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 we need food. Yes, we need food. We need candy for Thursday night for, for uh, the uh, Fall Fest, for the truck or treat. We have just about, I think I was told, we have maybe half of what we really need. It will be going for two hours, and, you know, there will be tons and tons of kids there. There always are. So if you can, you can bring some more candy. That would be great. Uh, I know that all the trunk, uh, the people who have trunks decorations, they will bring some along, but that's not going to be near enough. We'll have to have a whole lot more than that. So we need candy, so bring us candy. Uh, there will not be uh, Thursday night. We will not do the, the uh, pint and barrel. Thank you. Thank you. It will not be on because our leader has decided he wants to go on vacation or something. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we're we're very happy that that uh, that our pastor and his family is going to be able to take a vacation, and uh, which means y'all have to put up with somebody else next Sunday. Uh, you know, I don't really see too much more here to say. Y'all have got the bulletin. You they read can it, read so it. They can read it also. So right now, I'm going to invite you. I'm going to bless this here, and then we're going to, then we're going to uh, go ahead and pass the peace of Christ. Father God, we thank you for, for this day. Lord, we thank you for this, uh, this collection of coins and bills up here for feeding the 2,000. It will mean so much to the local food bank here in going towards purchasing food for those that, uh, that here in this county and this city that need help. Lord, we're thankful for the food bank that is going to be moving in here. We're thankful for all the preparations that's been made, Lord. And we're just so pleased that you've brought us together that we can be in ministry with each other. Lord, we ask that you bless us today during this service. Bless this collection. Bless our pastor as he brings us a word that we might all be here and have open hearts, open minds, and open ears to hear the word that you have for us. These things we ask in our precious Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Take three minutes and pass the peace of Christ to those around you.
Five seconds to make your way back to your seats. No pressure, but but don't sit down because we're gonna sing some more to you. Okay. One, two, ready, go. Here I am. All my intentions. All my obsessions. I want to lay them all down in your hands. Only your love is vital. Though I'm not entitled, still you call me your child. God, you don't need me. Somehow you want me. You know how you love me. Somehow that frees me to take my hand. Of my life and the way it should go. Whoa, God, you don't need me. Somehow you want me. You know how you love me. Somehow that frees me to open my hands up and give you control. I give you control. I've had plans. Shattered and broken, things I have holding fall through my hands. My friends, you may be mad at me, you're behind and before me. Somehow that frees me to open my hands up and give you control. If you want me, somehow you want me. The King of Heaven, He wants me. So this world has lost its grip on me. You want me, somehow you want me. King of heaven, he wants me. So this world has lost its grip on me. God, you don't need me. But somehow you want me. You know how you love me. Somehow that frees me to take my hands off of my life and the way it should go. Oh, God, you don't need me. Somehow you want me, you know how you love me, somehow that frees me to open my hands up and give you control, I give you control. you want me, oh, I somehow you, you want me, the King of Heaven, he wants me, so this world has lost its grip on me, you want me. King of heaven, he wants me. 
world has lost its grip on me. Amen. Thank you, band. You may be seated. I'm going to ask our ushers to come ush for us, please. Is that a verb, ush? Do we have any teachers in here? Ush, er, Susie, is that a word? To ush? To ush. Okay, I like that. We resemble that. You resemble that remark. We're going uh, gonna to pray over this. If you are watching on Facebook, hello, you can participate in this part of worship as well. Just follow the prompts on the screen. You can give digitally. Let's pray. God, we are grateful uh, that though we are not entitled, you call us your children. And that can never, ever, ever be taken away from us. Even if, like the prodigal child, we run off and squander the blessings that you have given us, if we decide to turn around and come back, there you are waiting with open arms because our status as children can never be taken away. And that is just boggling to me, but it is the truth, I believe. And so we just want to pause in this part of our worship service today to think about the implications of that, to look at the money in our hands, in our pockets, and to say, we have the option to squander this and still be loved, or to turn around and acknowledge you as the provider, the giver, the one who loves us, and still be loved. And really, the choice is up to us. We're still loved either way. But we want to put something in these buckets as they come by just to say, we see you, we thank you, we love you. And thank you for loving us. I pray that these meager offerings, these gifts, these tithes would be used for something magnificent in the kingdom. And we ask this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Watch this. You first have to understand the noise, the, the crowd. I could hear they were close onto the road. And, and not just because I had great hearing to make up for my blind eyes. I mean, this was a roar. People cheering and clapping and singing. As they got closer, I, I, I tried to listen as carefully as I could, see if I could make out what they were saying. I knew that they were coming my way. See, some of us sat by the main gates, where most people would come and go. I know people by how they walk, whether they drag their feet or not. And every day I just sat there, waited for mercy. But I, all I could do was listen. Suddenly I realized that they cheered for him. Some grumbled even speaking his name. Others said he was the Messiah. But a handful of them had, had witnessed him healing people. I crawled closer to the road, afraid that I might be trampled. I, mean, I could hear that there were a lot of people coming. Is that him? Is that the teacher? Anyone tell me? Is it him? And someone said, yes, it was Jesus. And to this day, I, I can't explain it, but I just yelled. I yelled louder than I had ever yelled. Son of David, have mercy on me. He heard me and he he came over where I was and asked what I wanted to see. And then everything I had always hoped to lay my eyes on was 
there before me. I followed him that day, and the next day, and the next day. What amazed me was, it seemed like the people that could see the best were the most blind. As for who I say he is, one day, I was yelling for him to heal me. Now, here we are in Jerusalem, yelling to all those who have ears to hear that he is Hosanna in the highest. He is the Messiah. What's that? But it's not a verb to ush. Yes, ma'am. Was that who? No, that was not Chuck Knows Church. You'll know it's Chuck because he says, go ask your pastor and tell him Chuck sent you. No, that was not Chuck. Let's pray. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen and amen. We have been walking with Jesus for the last four weeks. Today is week five, walking with Jesus. As I have done in weeks past, I'm going to ask you to listen to this story as I read it. But I want you to place yourself in the story. I suggest you close your eyes while I'm reading it to you. I want you to imagine that you are there. I want you to do your best to see what you hear, what you smell, what the surroundings are like. Are they dusty and dirty and gritty? Where are you in the scene as you're listening to this unfold? Are you one of the disciples? Are you a person in the crowd? Are you Bartimaeus? Uh, I'm going to ask that you not be Bartimaeus for this. Let Bartimaeus be Bartimaeus. Maybe you're just a bystander who just happened to be in the right place at the right time. But try to place yourself in the story as I read this, okay? This is from Mark chapter 10, 46 through 52. They came to Jericho as he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho. Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? At this point in the story, I want you to imagine... Jesus also looks square at you, dead in the eyes, and says, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The word from God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There's an old Asian uh, folk tale that I came across this week that I thought was kind of compelling. It goes something like this. There was a monk who gathered her students around her and took them into this building that on the outside said, heaven and hell. And they go into the building, and the building has two rooms. 
The first room has the big words hell written over the door. And she opens the door and lets the students peek in. And what they see is thousands of people crowded into this room. And there are tables set, piled with food. All the kinds of food that you could think of. But these people are angry and they are in hunger and they are complaining it's not a very good scene and then the students realize why they're complaining they're hungry they're angry because at each place setting at the table are a pair of chopsticks that are five five feet long and so they can pick up the food but they can't get the food into their mouths and she closes the door and she goes over to the next room heaven marked over the door and she opens the door and lets the students peek in and the scene is very very similar thousands of people cramped into this place tables of food piled up but this room there's celebration there's joy there's happiness and guess what there's five foot chopsticks there too the difference in this room is that they were feeding each other with their chopsticks I read that story this week, and I thought of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew saying, you know, the path to destruction is wide and easy. The path to life is narrow and hard. Make sure you find that path. But then I thought, but what if it's the same path? What if the destination is the same and it's how you view to see that path that makes all the difference. The story of blind Bartimaeus, I'm going to call him Bart throughout this sermon today. Blind Bart, I think might just be my favorite story in the Bible. There's a lot of good stories in the Bible, but I really love this one. Mainly because... Uh, in seminary, I had to do a, a study, an intense study for one of my classes on this, and I discovered that just a few chapters before this, uh, Jesus tells a parable to the folks that are listening. You may have heard the parable before. He talks about how he's casting out seed, that seed is cast out, and sometimes it lands in this place, and sometimes it lands here, and sometimes... And where the seed lands really kind of changes what happens to that seed, whether it takes root and grows up and becomes fruitful or not. Well, the first place in that parable that the seed lands is the path. That's the Greek word hodos. It's a roadside path. And the idea in the parable is that it's packed hard, kind of like this parking lot here. It's been packed down really hard. And so before the seed can even have a chance to kind of make its way down into the ground, the birds come and snatch up the seed and take it away before it can have any effect. And so Jesus goes on to explain, it just seems like there are some people that their hearts are just not in the place where they can receive the gospel. Like before it can even take root, before it can have any effect in their lives, uh, Satan comes and steals the good news from them. And yet, and yet, here we have the story of blind Bart, and guess where Bart is sitting? He's sitting on the hodas, same Greek word. Sitting on that same path that Jesus used in his parable, and guess what happens in the story, just like in the parable? He notices that Jesus is coming by, he says, son of David, have mercy on me. And the crowd begin to tell him, shut up. Stop it. We are trying to be with the master, with the teacher. We're trying to hear what he's saying. We're trying to observe him. You are disrupting us. Sounds a lot like the, uh, the disciples with the little children, doesn't it? You're disrupting us. Get out of here. Be quiet. Go away just like the birds that come and try to steal that seed of joy, that seed of good news. But Bartimaeus doesn't follow the protocol. Bart instead yells out louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus hears him. 
And Jesus calls him over. And he says, what do you want me to do for you? Now you may recall last week, or was it the week before? I've slept since then. Just right before this, James and John go up to Jesus. Do you remember that scene? And they, and they say, Master, we want you to do whatever we ask of you. And Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? Same question, almost verbatim. What do you want me to do for you? But James and John didn't get what they asked for. Bart did. And I wonder what the difference was. For a couple of months now, uh, I have reconnected with one of my old seminary professors. Um, he was trained in the ancient art of koans. Do you know what koans are? Koans are ancient riddles that have been collected over time from China, Korea, Japan. It's a collection of them. And they are riddles that must be solved by the student. And as the student works through the riddles and solves the riddles, what happens is the, the ego, the, the false self, or what the, the Bible calls the flesh, begins to kind of dissolve, and the true self begins to make itself known in these. And so the student works with the teacher uh, to answer the koans, and the koans only have one right answer, okay? There's only one right answer to these things, and if you pause for even a second, the teacher dismisses you, get out of here, and go and work on your koan some more. I'll see you next week. So you can imagine it's, it's very frustrating uh, because you want to talk it out, you want to, you want to try to explain where you're thinking process is, and the teacher says, no, answer it or don't. If you don't have it, go, right? And so it's also compelling because you want to get the right answer. You want to get it, you want to get it. And so I'm working on these koans with my professor for a couple months now. And I was reading this scripture, and, and I was thinking about Jesus saying to James and John, what do you want me to do for you? And saying to, to blind Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? And I thought, is this perhaps a, a Jewish koan? Is there more in this question than just what it seems like on the surface? Is this perhaps a riddle to which there is only one right answer and either you get it right or you get it wrong? And James and John got it wrong and they are dismissed to go work on the riddle some more? Go, James and John. You don't even know what you're asking. Go, go work on it some more. But Bartimaeus had the right answer. He knew it. He knew the answer, and he said it. You see, it's the same answer that Jesus is looking for from us when he looks in our eyes and says, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus is asking this question of all of us. That's why I wanted you to place yourself in the scene and imagine for just a moment Jesus looking at you and saying, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? What is it you want me to do for you? Jesus is asking this question, and there's only one right answer. The answer is this, Lord, I want to see. I want to see like you see. I want to see with your eyes. I want to see myself. I want to see the world like God sees it. Give me those eyes. Help me to see. Give me that sight. As Paul says, don't set your mind on the things of the flesh. Set your mind on the things of the Spirit because the flesh is false. It's deceitful. It lies. Give me eyes that see from the Spirit's point of view. That's what I want, Jesus. I saw in the video... There's a scene in which Jesus' thumbs are rubbing across Bart's eyes and he opens them. Did you see that? But the Bible doesn't say that. 
You remember in the story when I read it, what it does say? Jesus doesn't touch Bart. He doesn't lay hands on him. He doesn't pray over him. He doesn't do any of that stuff. He simply says, go, your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. And just like that, Bart can see. That tells me that it was the desire to see correctly that was the solution all along. Faith. Desire, faith, drive. Having the correct answer in your heart. I want to see like you see. Because if it's true that the path is the same for everyone, and it's how you see that path and where it's headed that makes all the difference, you've got to have a desire to see correctly. In fact, Jesus said it another way. Ask and it will be given to you. Knock and the door shall be opened. Seek and you shall find. It's the desire. It's the drive. It's the faith. It's the wanting to that is the solution to the problem. And I love it because after this moment in which no doubt everybody paused to see this thing unfold, the same crowd that was telling him to shut up only moments before, now they're cheering. Awesome. Awesome, right? And Jesus says to Bart, go. Go enjoy your new life. You have new sight. Go and enjoy it. And Jesus, as he's saying this, Bart, go your way, enjoy your life. And then Jesus turns toward Jerusalem because the next stop is Jerusalem. Jericho is the last town before you get to Jerusalem. And we know why he's going to Jerusalem. We know why. He's already told us in the story. He's already told the disciples, this is what's going to happen in Jerusalem. And he sets his face toward Jerusalem. Bart, go enjoy your life. I've got something I need to finish. But there's one more surprise in this story. Because Bart does not go and enjoy his life with his new sight, the scriptures tell us that he too turns and follows Jesus on the hodas, on the path. Or as the movement of Jesus' followers would become known as members of the way. Bart turns and follows Jesus on the way. The same hodas that he had been sitting on as a blind man is now that same hodas that becomes a part of his new journey, which now includes self-surrender and suffering and death and resurrection. That's the path that Bart follows Jesus on. It's the same path. He's on the same path, but he has new eyes now and a new heart and new intentions. He's got a new mission in life. It's to follow Jesus into that place. And so I ask you this morning, are you on the way? Which path are you on? The same path. But how do you see that path? Are your eyes getting adjusted? As you get older and wiser, are your eyes getting adjusted a little bit better? Can you see a little bit better? Do you even want to see if it means giving up everything that you hold dear? If Jesus asks you, what do you want? Do you want to answer that question? I know the right answer, but I don't want to say it because I know what it means. Perhaps that's where you are in the journey. But I would wager to guess that if the result of answering this Jewish riddle correctly results in life now and life that carries us over that bridge into the next whatever it is, it's probably worth answering and following Jesus on the way, on the path. But the choice is up to each of you. What will you do when you're handed five-foot chopsticks? God, I thank you so much for this story.
There's so much that can be talked about and learned from. We could sit and meditate on this story for a year and still probably learn new things. And so I thank you for the example of Bartimaeus. I thank you for his tenacity, his willingness not to follow the protocol, which also tells me that even when Jesus says some hearts just cannot receive the good news, and yet we have this example of one who did. That nothing is impossible when you get involved. And so I pray that we would examine our own soil of our hearts to see if it's hard-packed, if it's loosening up, if it's got weeds growing up around it, perhaps it's a little rocky, or if it's just really good soil. And that whatever we discover about ourselves, that we, like Bartimaeus, would not be satisfied with shutting up and going away, but that we would lean in and we would say, no, 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 this is our opportunity. This is our chance to receive what Jesus has to freely give everyone. And that we too would turn and follow him on the path, even knowing where it leads and what it means. Give us new eyes today, new eyes to see, new ears to hear, new hearts to receive. This we pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, our Alpha and our Omega, whose strong and loving arms surround the universe. For with your eternal word and Holy Spirit, you are forever one God. Through your word, you created all things and called them good. And in you we live and move and have our being. When we fell into sin, you did not leave us. You made covenant with your people Israel and spoke through prophets and teachers. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is Jesus Christ who called you Abba, Father. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own and filled them with a longing for a peace that would last and for a justice that would never fail. In Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed their power forever. You raised from the dead the same Jesus who now reigns with you in glory and poured upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. On the night before meeting with death, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke that bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, for this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will, will come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts, that in the breaking of this bread and the drinking of this wine, we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world, redeemed by Christ's blood. As the grain and grapes once dispersed in the fields are now united on this table in bread and wine, so may we and all your people be gathered from every time and place into the unity of your eternal household 
and feast at your table forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forevermore. Amen. And now, as those who have said, we want to follow Jesus on the way, let's pray the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I need some volunteers. Tia, come on up. JT, come on up. One more. I need one more. Anyone? Anyone? All right, Susie, come on up. Thanks. Uh, I'm going to serve these folks first, and then you'll be invited to come up. Hank will uh, guide you uh, up here. If you're a guest with us, a couple things I need to let you know. Um, first of all, we take by intinction, which just means when you come up, you'll receive the bread and dip it in the cup and then take both elements together. However, the first cup that you come to will be real wine in the chalice. The second cup will be grape juice, so dip it in the cup of your choice. Uh, if you need gluten-free, the third station will have a little plate with some gluten-free wafers and pre-filled cups of grape juice, so you can take that hasn't been contaminated with gluten, okay? Let me serve them first, and then y'all can come up. Susie, the body of Christ broken for you. JT, the body of Christ broken for you. Tia, the body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ poured out for you. The blood of Christ poured out for you. Thank you. You can take that. Thank you. You can take that. Thank you very much. Friends, you don't have to be a member of this church. You don't have to be a Methodist. If you are here today, this grace is for you. Jesus died for you. It is his table. You are invited to come. Won't you come?
you all stand, we're going to sing a final song together. Listen while you still can hear. Listen while you still can hear the master's calling. The master's calling. Bow down. be seated. I'm going to ask someone very special to come up. Angie, will you come up here? This is Angie Moore, and she has been 
hanging out with us for some time, but she recently expressed a desire to join our congregation, to which we say, yes, yes, yes. Isn't that fabulous? And so what we do is we just ask a, a couple of simple questions. I'm going to ask her a question, and then I'm going to ask you all a question, because you're part of this too, and then we're going to bless you all. Angie, I'm going to ask you, in the presence of all of these people, will you be loyal to this congregation and uphold it by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If you will, say, I will. I will. Fabulous. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, I commend to your love and care, Angie, whom we today receive into the membership of this congregation, Will you do all in your power to increase her faith, to confirm her hope, and perfect her in love? If you will, say, we will. We will. Fabulous. Will you stand? Give her a round of applause. We are so excited. Thank you. All right, grab each other's hands. Make a big chain through this place. Angie and I are going to say a blessing over you. I'm going to say it, but she's... It's in her heart. Fabulous. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. May you know that you are perfectly loved, you're completely forgiven, and you're uniquely empowered. Now you're called to go out into the world to call yourself a Christian, which means little Christ. You feel the weight of that? To call yourself the hands and feet of Jesus, what a heavy weight. It's not heavy. Jesus says, this yoke that I'm offering you is actually light compared to the world's weight. But you're going to forget sometimes this week. You're going to forget who you are, who lives inside of you, whose child you are. And when that happens, I pray that you remember this blessing and that you go, wait a minute, what am I doing? I'm a beloved child of God. And that you get back up there Get back up, dust yourself off, and get back out there to love folks as Jesus has called us. Until we are gathered together in this place again next week, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, please go from this place in peace. Amen.